How would you react if you heard footsteps in your home at night, only to discover you're in the presence of a soul from purgatory? Well, this happened to Padre Pio. Stay tuned to hear the story. Welcome back to our YouTube channel following Padre Pio. If you're new to our channel, Padre Pio was a Capuchin friar, mystic, and miracle worker whose intercession is still very powerful and active today. We publish videos and shorts five days a week, so follow us to find out more about the life of this fascinating saint, and you will be amazed at what Padre Pio can do for you, a family member, or a friend. And now to our story. In the book of Revelation, it is written that nothing defiled can or will enter heaven. And if we look within ourselves, we can see various flaws, such as anger, jealousy, despair, or even the worst of all sins, pride. But if nothing defiled or unclean can enter into heaven, how can we enter heaven when we all have our flaws? Well, let's look at a story from the life of Padre Pio that will help us answer this question. Listen to this. Padre Pio recounts how late one evening, while deeply immersed in prayer in the choir, he was suddenly disturbed by the sound of footsteps. He then noticed the candles and flower vases started moving by the main altar. He thought someone was downstairs, so he called out, Who's there? but received no response. This would probably be more than enough to get me running for the door. But Padre Pio then resumed his prayers, only to be disturbed once again by the same sounds. This time, he had the impression that one of the candles in front of the statue of Our Lady of Grace had fallen. Wanting to see better what was happening, Padre Pio stood up and ventured towards the source of the commotion. In the gentle glow of candlelight, he encountered a young friar who was cleaning around the altar. Padre Pio exclaimed, What are you doing in the dark? The young friar replied, I am cleaning. Padre Pio was puzzled. You're cleaning in the dark? Who are you? The young friar replied, I am a Capuchin novice who must spend his time in purgatory here, and I am in need of prayers. And then he vanished. Padre Pio immediately began praying for this soul. So as we just heard, a soul from purgatory visited Padre Pio, seeking his prayers. This remarkable anecdote provides us with an answer to the earlier question regarding how can we enter heaven despite our flaws. Well, thankfully, our compassionate Father in heaven grants souls the opportunity to undergo a state of purification before entering into his presence. This purification process is commonly referred to as purgatory. And as we just heard, the souls in purgatory are in need of our prayers to reach heaven sooner. We know from several accounts that Padre Pio held a special devotion to the souls in purgatory, frequently assisting them with his prayers and offering his sufferings on their behalf. But where does this devotion come from? Is it a recent addition to our faith? Or does it have deep roots in the history of our church? Let's look at a few examples to answer these questions. St. Gregory the Great, who was born in the 6th century, mentioned that the souls of the deceased sometimes appear to the living and request masses to be said for them. We can go even further back to the time of St. Augustine and his mother, St. Monica. She died in the year 387 and asked her son to remember her at the altar after her death. Going even further back, between the 1st and 3rd centuries, we discover inscriptions in the ancient catacombs bearing phrases like rest in peace and prayers for the deceased etched in stone. Furthermore, the great apologist Tertullian of Carthage, also from the early Christian times, emphasized that a widow who does not pray for her deceased husband acts as if she had divorced him. And last but not least, 2 Maccabees from the Old Testament suggests it is a virtuous act to make atonement for the deceased 
reflecting the belief in the importance of prayers and offerings on behalf of the deceased. So as we can see, praying for the deceased has been a constant practice in Catholic tradition. These historical examples remind us of the importance of remembrance, intercession, and devotion within our faith. And let us not forget that a plenary indulgence for the deceased can be gained from the 1st of November to the 8th of November every year, or as determined by local bishops. In order to obtain the indulgence, a Catholic in the state of grace must fulfill the following conditions. First, visit a cemetery and pray there for the dead, even if only mentally. Second, make a sacramental confession. Third, receive Holy Communion. Fourth, recite at least one Our Father and one Hail Mary for the Holy Father. And fifth, be free from attachment to all sin, including venial. By fulfilling these conditions, we can secure this indulgence for a soul in purgatory. I strongly encourage you to participate in this noble act of prayer and remembrance. I am sure the souls in purgatory would greatly appreciate our help. And one final quote from Padre Pio on the importance of praying for the holy souls. Padre Pio said, More souls of the dead from purgatory than of the living climb this mountain to attend my masses and seek my prayers. Thank you for listening. Please do share this video to help our channel grow. And please give our channel a boost by continuing to watch another video. This will help with the YouTube algorithm. I have recommended some videos especially chosen for you on the end screen. Or just click on one of the links in the description below for a full selection of great Padre Pio stories or our playlist of Padre Pio thoughts for the day. And don't forget to enroll your Mass intentions for next Friday's Padre Pio Holy Mass. You will find the link in the description below. And stay tuned for the next video on the life of Padre Pio.